So we've got, uh, like I went over, we've got our hand holes canted, we've got our, uh, uh, our back at the right uh, angle, and uh, just about ready to start boring these uh, short spindle holes. But first, I want to check to see if the center of the chair is lining up with the center of the back, or should I say the center of the back lining up with the center of the chair, because we're not going to move the center of the chair. Uh, so I've turned it this way towards the camera so you can see, and I put a dark mark right there on the, on the, on the arm rail. And now before you do this, you've got to have a line drawn perpendicular to the center line of the seat, because if this thing's off just a little bit, because it's leaning back, it'll throw it one way or the other. So you need to make sure that it's, that it's coming back square. So if you look at that, you'll see that I'm maybe an eighth off to that, to the right side of the chair. So I'm going to put a little tick mark there. Now, I'm going to go from this side, because I'll negate whatever is off. It's hitting dead on it again. Okay, so the center of the chair is lining up about an eighth to the right. Now, we're we could we could go with that. We just move the center of the back and put it right over here. But you're going to see that I've still got uh, uh, a couple of chances to be able to swing that back over just a little bit, and I'll show you when we uh, when we get there. But it's good to know where it is right now before I start. All right. So uh, set up to. To bore these, I need to uh, lay them out first. Here's our dummy here. We're going to put the dummy back here to support it. And uh, this has got just the right drop on it. It's about a, a 30 second lower in that dummy, which means that I just it put a little bit of pressure on it and hold it, hold it in place. It won't be flopping around with me. Uh, now for these spindles, I put the first one at 4 inches. And I'm going to mark with this ink pen so you can see it. I put the first one at four inches from the arm support. And the next one at three inches. And the reason for that is because the arm support has more body to it. And I want to have more space between that first spindle and it. So that's why I wouldn't put them on both on three and a half three and a half inch centers. So I've got uh, four inches for the first one from the arm support, three inches for the second one. Now I'm going to bore this just a tad bit this side of center because it goes through the arm right like that. So let's get, get us a little bit off center there and this thing's rocking with me, it kind of drives me nuts when it does that. Uh, so now drilling it, you can drill it with, once again, whatever drill bit you want. Uh, Pete Gowart uses a cordless drill with a brad point and a brad point that he's ground and he sets the clutch on, on one or two, and just as it starts to break through, it clutches with him. He pulls it back, puts it on full power, and goes through and makes a really nice clean hole. I'd like to get as clean a hole as that. It's, it's really nice, but I'm not going to use a, a cordless drill, so I like to use my bit brace. Uh, so I'm going to use an auger bit on this. Uh, this is These, these holes are, are work really well with a auger, but I need something backing it up. Uh, so I've got a little piece of uh, softer wood, sassafras is what that just happens to be, anything will work. And now as a board right down there, let me put dot down there, that's where that spindle is, that's where the other one is, and that's what I'm going to be looking at, is that right there? Okay. Now I didn't tell you, this is a 5 16 bit. Uh, 
I play around with these. Sometimes I do them 3 8 sometimes I do them 5 16 I'm not sure which one to like. I decided to do these 5 16 uh, So that's why I got the 5 16 bit. So anyway, so line her up and shoot. Okay, I felt that go through because it went into the softer wood. Come on out of there. And now we'll change it to right back here. Get a grip right there, and, and that, that worked. Okay. Put on that and stop that thing. Let's sight down the bit. So typically I'd switch it around and do the other side and then I'd bore these holes. But I'm just going to show you how I do this one side and then while you're not looking I'll do the other. Do the other one and go from there. But uh, uh, So now you can sight down these things and see how well you did. Uh, hey, it did pretty good on that one. And uh, uh, did pretty good on that one. Okay. So now I'm going to drill these holes. Yep. Ain't gonna work, what is it? Just move that out of the way. Now, you can drill these holes before you carve the seat with siding lines the same way that you would have on all this. And it's much faster than doing it this way. But Doing it this way is a real accurate, and especially if, you, if you're designing a chair, it's a great way to do it because it just nails it just perfect. So that's why I'm showing you how to do it, how to do it right like this. It's because it's, it, it just, you can't miss, you know, you can't miss. I mean, I mean you're lined up just perfect. Takes a little more time, but you know, I don't care. So this bit happens to be 18 turns to an inch and an eighth. And uh, come on out of there. Okay, so now I'm going to take that out, I'm going to flip around and go to the other side of the chair, but I'm not going to show you that because I'll show you this. And the next time we come back, I'll be putting the spindles in there. So we've got the holes drilled on both sides, got the holes in the arm rail drilled on both sides, and got the holes in the seat drilled on both sides. Uh, I like to shoulder these spindles on the, on the, the, the comb back and a sack back where you have the arm rail coming through it's not as important as something like a continuous arm where uh, where the arm can drop a little bit because these spindles right here can hold up this arm rail but I still like to to, to shoulder them it make, makes for a nice job and it only takes just a few seconds to do that and uh, 
So I get a measurement there. Make sure I didn't move that. Felt like it moved with me a little bit. Nope, didn't move with me. What do we got right over here? See if that'll work over here. Should work, shouldn't it? Yeah. Now yeah, what about that one? That one's a little bit shorter. So see what we got there. We got uh, we got nine, and then we add an inch for the uh, tenon. So we got. 10 inches for those right there and now let's get this one right here and see if this one's the same yeah it's close enough about 30 seconds maybe let's see what that is it's uh, 8 and 13 so 9 and 13 16 so now let me get my cutter. Where's my cutter? There it is. My cutter right there. Now I'm going to look at my spindles, and one advantage to uh, whittling the spindles as opposed to turning the short ones is that they have, they're not straight because they follow the long wood fibers. So I mean, you might say, well, is that an advantage? Uh, so I'll put the two that are the most crooked out here, and they're going to be put in this second hole back here. And I'll show you, show you why here in just a minute. Um, so let's see. I want to pull that over. That's, so I want to pull that over that way. So this is going to be this is going to be spindle number two over there and that is nine and thirteen. This is spindle number twelve and it is nine and thirteen. And this one will be number one and it is ten and this will be number thirteen. Now I'm around this way. I always start on the right, come around, and that will be 10. Okay, so I put on my put on my blue grippy glove here and I can run these things right through. Left these things off alone, didn't I? Made a lot of work for myself there. Guess I could cut them off. Okay, so I have a slight little shoulder on them now, but I'm going to clean that up uh, with the spoke shave and then we'll come back. So we're ready to do a uh, partial dry run here. Um, and uh, so i got to twist those spindles into their holes so I put these gloves on so it doesn't hurt my elbows so much, take so much power. So there's number one right over here. And what I do is I uh, I watch it as it comes around. And like I said before, because I split these things out and follow along wood fibers and whittle them, they're not straight, not necessarily straight. They're straight wood fibers, but not straight. And uh, so I, I turn all the crooks in. You could turn all the crooks out, I just turn them in so I know where they are. So let's turn that one right like that. And I've got one inch depth marks on them. 
now. You might be able to see that. And so, let's see what that one is. Okay. Now, slide the back on. Okay, so that's down. Of course, it hit those shoulders right there and stopped. And we're about, uh, yeah, 30 second right there. That uh, that's just about exactly where we had it. It's, uh, it's a tad bit, tad bit lower. That's okay. Uh, let's check left to right here. See what we're looking like. Ah, come on. Okay, this one could go down just to go a little bit more. Yeah, I believe it went sitting right on that shoulder, but there it goes. It's okay. So those are even. Now we're going to check our uh, square for the center. So I'm going to turn it around to you so you can so you can see that and uh, set our square on it. See where it's hitting, and pretty much hitting just exactly where it was before we put those short spindles in there. Uh, so it might even be just a hair bit further, but let's say about an eighth of an inch. The center is about an eighth of an inch that way. So I'd like to pull the center over. I don't have to. I mean, I can remark that and lay it out, and you never see it, and it work fine. But we might as well. You know, go for it. So I know that this spindle is slightly crooked and it comes to the inside there. So if I if I go right like that and turn it, let's say, let's don't go too far, don't overdo it. Okay, we haven't moved it at all, so we hadn't overdone it. Watch that. I hope you can see that moving. So we got about, got almost all of it, not quite all of it, but almost all of it. So our new center will be about a 30 second to that side. So I'll draw it right like that. And now our short spindles have orientation. So they have to go back in the exact same way. So I've already got numbers on them, so I know where they go there. And now they have a V mark for the orientation. And hopefully if they go right back in there the exact same way, then the back will line up exactly where it is. So uh, that's good. We're finished with that. Next thing we're going to do is uh, going to lay out our long spindles from the center out and bore those. I'll be boring those exactly the way that I bored these, just siding down at these holes. And then I'll be threading the uh, extension back up through there and boring the holes in the seat.